everyone. This week we got to see Theresa May in action. Wait, hang on, there's no space in there, it's one word, in action. This week we saw inaction from Theresa May, a lack of action or persuasion, the amount of productive work you'd normally more associate with a Mediterranean country on a hot afternoon. Even she knows the Brexit bill's dreadful, but her advisers think that by promoting it alongside Jeremy Corbyn on the BBC, it might seem more palatable, like a prawn sandwich that's somehow passed its sell-by date but it kind of smells okay. The Brexit bill will be coming to Parliament though, and some Remainers are promoting it with the excitement level you'd expect if Led Zeppelin or the Smiths were getting back together, whereas the bill itself is more like a knockoff tribute band you'd see on the ferry back from Zeebrugge, or a get-together of 1970s chart toppers The Brotherhood of Man, except that not a lot of backbenchers will be quote saving their kisses for May. Currently there's 100 backbench government MPs voting against it, the government science minister just resigned from the cabinet in order to vocalise his objection to it. And in this topsy-turvy up this darn world, I for one actually find myself agreeing wholeheartedly with the EU Commission because they finally said in so many words what so many other people have said from the start, which is that you either get a bad deal like this one, or preferably no deal, by which you mean no deal, where you can purchase non-EU goods like Australian wine, coffee, computers, Dysons and half the Argos catalogue without it being subjected to European import duty, or because it wasn't made in France. Do you want to buy a Tesla? Wait till next year, it'll be 10 grand less because the German car industry won't be passing laws to discourage you from buying one. Whilst the continent would dearly love to rename Ireland West Flanders, it stands that by this time next year it'll be pretty much the same as it is because no one in Dublin or London is proposing actually building a wall. And as with Mexico, certainly no one's willing to pay for one even if they wanted it. If that means there's different rules on either side of the land border, then it would mean it's exactly the same as it currently is, with wildly different levels of taxation, business rules, different currencies, not to mention a sudden break between metric and miles per hour that does little to help anyone, other than those wanting to give a misleading not to 60 time for their car quoted in kilometres. It seems that British companies might just have to start trading with the EU without getting a say on the rules of the game. You know, it's the same torturous position that companies like Apple, Google, Toyota and Samsung have to live with daily, and they're pretty poor. If you're buying an advent calendar this weekend, get four of them, because whilst it's 25 days till Christmas, it's just over 100 until Britain leaves the EU in March. And by a combination of blinding competence and parliamentary procedure that makes it impossible to legislate for a new referendum in time, nor rewrite a deal, we're going to be going WTO, by which I mean either World Trade Organization or, quote, without the obstructionists. Anyway, see you next week. Click like these, click subscribe.